My name is Yesenia Figueroa. I'm an associate consultant with uh, Mentors. We're a Salesforce partner on the App Exchange for Financial Force. Um, when I started the program, it was September 2021, and I got the job offer at the end of February 2022. So this year, literally right at six months, right about to be six months. And before I got this job, I was actually working at a strip club. So I was there for four years. Yeah, four years. And I love that job. I don't want anyone to think that I didn't. I definitely love that job. I love the people that I worked for and with. And it was an easy job. It had flexible hours. Um, and it was never boring which was one of the things that was like, I've had a lot of jobs in the past and I would hide it, but um, it was because I was bored. I would I would get bored really easy and I didn't get bored at that job because it was always something new happening. So I stayed there for four years. I was in and out of nursing school during that time. And I thought I was gonna, you know, get into the medical field, but COVID happened and I realized I didn't want to be in the healthcare industry at all. After I saw everything that the nurses were dealing with, I didn't want to be part of it. So um, I decided not to go back to school for that. And I, well, the club shut down and reopened probably like three or four times. Um, and I just felt like a sort of loyalty and I didn't want to go work for anything else um so I, I waited i waited for them to open back up and when it did i mean all sense of like job security was gone there was from the moment we got notification that we were shutting down it was just it was terrifying so a little bit of context, um, my husband actually works for the club. The owners have three clubs in the area and he works for a different one. Um, he does security for one of the other ones. And so we both lost our jobs at the same time. And my grandma, oops, sorry, shaking. My grandma uh, lives with us and it was just, it was terrifying because you know, savings only last so long. And we were a long time waiting uh, for the clubs to open back up. So like in the meantime, we did DoorDash and Uber and Lyft and basically like any like side gigs that we could find. But we were actually very close to being homeless. And um, Um, it was hard, it was hard. Um, anyway, fast forward a little bit. So the clubs open back up and we kind of get a footing again. Like I had no idea what Salesforce was at this point. Um, we were starting to get savings and we were starting to catch up on like, the debt that we had accumulated during COVID. And I was looking for something different. I was just like desperate. Like it, there had to be something else, you know? So, um, Choose FI. I don't know how I learned about Choose FI, but I learned about Choose FI and I started binge listening from episode one. And then I eventually got to the episode where Bradley, they were, introducing side gigs or um, different ways to increase your income, I believe. And he was on there and it piqued my interest. I was like, that sounds way too good to be true. It doesn't seem real. Um, so I had to do some more research, but I think I immediately went and looked for the episode uh, with Anita because it came up when, when I was looking for it. So she was definitely a big part in convincing me. Um, 
Well, at first I had to be convinced that Salesforce was real in the first place. Um, and I think I was really skeptical until I went onto sites that listed jobs like Indeed. And I looked for the job titles that they were claiming existed and they were real and they had benefits and it was remote. And it just, the salary just seemed unreal. So I was like, okay, that this, this is, this is something like I need, I need to get onto this. And, um, I started, I think I got onto trailhead and I was playing around with it. Very, I, I am very easy to distract. And there are so many things on trailhead that are interesting that I just kind of got lost in it. Um, and it was like a two week span. I don't know if you guys still do this, but the program wasn't for sale yet. Like it was going to be for sale on a certain date. And I think it was like two weeks from the time I found out about it. And so I was doing research like, yes, I want to do Salesforce, but do I actually want to do the program? Because it was, it was a big chunk of change, you know, it was, and we weren't we weren't back to like stable yet so i didn't i wasn't sure about it and i'm a really big um do-it-yourselfer I'm like hyper independent like i i'm learning now that it's okay to ask for help um and that was one of the things like i didn't want to do the program because it was a lot of money and i could just do it myself but between the time that i found out about it to when it went on sale, I was like, that is my deadline. I'm going to decide by then if I'm going to get it or not. And the more research I did, the more testimonials I watched, um, it convinced me like I was already lost on trailhead. I needed some direction. Um, I'm a really good student, but if I don't have like a set path or a set, like somewhere to go, I'm going to, uh, it just, it doesn't, it's not going to happen. So I decided to buy it and we did the payment plan because I mean, you know, it was a lot, <laughs> it was a lot, but it's so worth it. It was so worth it. You know, I, we ended up doing like extra hours, like doing deliveries and just any way that we could make up, like make more money to be able to do it because we, we were both convinced. Like this, this is what we needed to do. And my husband doesn't want to do it. He's not, he doesn't think it's for him yet. I'm working on that. But um, I knew that I wanted to do it and he believed in me. And he was the only person around me that believed in me. So we just took the leap, you know? The thing that made the most difference to me was the community and specifically the study group. Um, those, I mean, they know who they are. Uh, those are my day ones, you know, um, they, aside from my husband, because he was the only like in-person person that supported me. Cause I've started a lot of things and I haven't finished most of them. Um, so like nobody believed that I would, you know, nobody believed that I would finish and I wanted to quit so many times. It just, the transition seemed like it was too much sometimes. Like even before starting, before starting, it just, it just seemed super overwhelming um just to go from service industry to corporate america i didn't know what to expect because i had no corporate experience i didn't like i did office management at the club but it wasn't like it was at the club it was <laughs> it wasn't in an office somewhere it's like a completely different experience you know um so that was terrifying and I didn't feel like I was enough. I didn't feel like it was for me. Control myself. Um, it, it was hard. It just seems like tech in general, tech feels like 
this far off thing sometimes, you know? I'm gonna control my voice. Sorry. <laughs> so it does it does feel like this far away thing for someone else. It doesn't feel especially like when you come from something that has nothing to do with it and you don't have any kind of like corporate experience or technical experience. You don't have a degree. Um, and then like another thing that I just never imagined for me, just like as, as an immigrant refugee, right? My parents worked a lot. Um, that I mean that's like a thing but it just never seemed like nobody in my family had gone and finished college it nobody was doing any kind of tech related thing no one around me was doing any kind of tech related thing so it just didn't seem like it was even a possibility you know so the talent stacker group every time I wanted to quit every time I was having those doubts I would go to them and they kept me going, you know? I never hid the fact that I was in, that I worked in a strip club to my interviewers. I never hid that because I didn't want to be in a position where they, where it would come up later and they would think that I lied or that um, I put them in a, in a tough position because they didn't know or I withheld or whatever else. So I never hid that from them, but I did hide it from like the general public because like there's a lot of judgment that comes with with it. And um, I just didn't want people to know, but I did notice during interviews, like people would skirt around the subject. Like they, there's no way they didn't know. And my, my boss, today not today but recently said he was not the only one to notice but he was the only one that acknowledged it and it made me feel seen it made me feel like like it was okay because we he was the one that brought it up i didn't have to bring it up which i usually did because you're not gonna avoid this subject <laughs> this is part of my story it's not going anywhere um so he actually was the one that brought it up and we had a conversation about it. He was like, well, what did you do? Like, how was it? Did you like it? Like, it was just a conversation, you know? And I've had a lot of people say that they wanted, they didn't know if they wanted to have their past experience in their resume or wherever else, like they wanted to hide it. Oh man, don't hide it. Because like, if you think about it, like, do you really want to work for a company or with people that don't acknowledge who you actually are, you know? Like, do you want to hide that part of yourself? Or do you want to work with people that like, are okay with it? And you would be surprised how many people are actually okay with your past because your past doesn't like define who you're going to be. It doesn't define who you can become. So don't hide it, if anything, shine it because that's how you find your people that's how you find your company you know so just being completely transparent i am terrible with money and i should have known <laughs> that, it wasn't, that wasn't going to change um so there's that but it's actually been incredible anyway um, so we were in a two bedroom and I mean, it was pretty tight because my grandma was with us. She was in the second bedroom and I didn't have anywhere to have an office or like have a space. So I was set up in the living room and we have two birds, which are very loud. And we have a cat and it was rough. <laughs> it was rough because they're, and I mean, Latinos will know family comes over all the time, <laughs> all the time. And so like, I'll be in the middle of an interview and then people just come busting through the door and you know, like there goes my professional like look that I'm trying to have. 
I don't know if I even ever had it, but there it went. And so, yeah, it was rough. And then after getting this job, aside from like during COVID and stuff, like we, we held back a lot. Like we just, I mean, we couldn't afford things, you know, we couldn't afford it. So when I got this job, we actually moved into a three bedroom. It was the same apartment complex, but there's a, like right now I can see it, the, um, there's the lake and it's beautiful. Um, yeah, it, I never thought I would have like a lake view. And I mean, it's an apartment, it's not a house, but still, when I did the first walkthrough, I, I was by myself because the apartment was empty and I know the office people. So she gave me the key to just do the first walkthrough by myself. And I cried. I cried because I didn't, well, first of all, I'm a crybaby, if y'all haven't noticed, but um, yeah, so, it just it just didn't seem like I was ever going to get to a place where I could, you know? And it's a three bedroom, so I have an office now. And even though it looks like a storage room right now, it's an office and it has a door and I don't have to worry about people like busting in. And I can be professional and it's just, I don't know, it's it's giving, it's given me room to breathe. Like, I, I'm not scared about the future. I'm not scared of my job security. I don't, I'm not scared of like where we need to live, you know? Like, it feels like it's all being taken care of because I have options, because I have the flexibility that the job gives me, you know?